I hope you hear me, right? So, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here um, in person with you. So my name is Aida Metovic, and today's talk would be about uh, a project, uh, one of our projects called Delivery Time Prediction. So it should be a journey from the POC to production, and somehow what we learned and what challenges we kind of experienced in this process. So a bit of introduction, okay. Um, the pointer is not working. Thank you. A bit of um, some background of myself. I'm working as a machine learning engineer for the last three years. Before that, I had a software engineer, so I worked as a software engineer. Um, how I get into this field? So I've started, uh, did, did my master studies at Technical University of Graz. That was around 2015, 16. So that was a good timing because then most of the machine learning libraries popular started at that point. So it was. That's why I changed my profession or moved into this machine learning data science. And here is my LinkedIn contact and email. So if you have any questions for, for any topics, this, of course, and also additional, feel free to contact me. Agenda for today would be the following. So I would give a short introduction about the company in economy. So what is our main specialization, where we're located in and some of our client references. Then I will start with the project overview. So delivery time prediction project. So give you a main motivation, then for uh, explain the domain knowledge specifics, um, some architecture of a project, and of course some machine learning approaches we tried. Then front end result just means how we integrated everything in production, and I, I will kind of finish this presentation with some learnings and key takeaways, not only for this project but in general like what we experienced in the last three years. At the end we will also have time for Q and A session. So let's start. The Netconomy as a company is founded in year 2000 with headquarters in Graz, Austria. Over time we grew and we are having around 500 employees in nine locations across Europe. And the main uh, specialization is that we consider ourselves as a full service provider for e-commerce solutions. So our main part partners are SAP and Google Cloud. SAP for e-commerce and Google Cloud for not only e-commerce but also machine learning projects. Um, Locations, as I already mentioned, Graz is our headquarter, and we have offices in Klagenfurt in Vienna in Austria, um, offices in Dortmund in Berlin in Germany, uh, in Novi Sad and Belgrade here in Serbia, then Madrid, Spain, and last but not the least in Zurich in Switzerland. So that's our main focus. Um, some of our clients here, I will try to be short. Uh, so the, the main point here is that we work with clients with different industries. So for instance, 666 Lutz is one of our first clients from originally from Austria, specialized in furniture industry. And here they are from more familiar as uh, more known as Lesnina in this region. Douglas is uh, one of the biggest beauty providers. We work closely together with them uh, for e-commerce solution and also multiple machine learning projects. Swarovski is probably familiar also. Virgin Megastore is a big client in Middle East. United Group for this region may be a bit more uh, known uh, in Shopster uh, as an e-commerce platform and so on. So this is just a short overview, but let's, go, let's now get into the more interesting topics like a project. So to, uh, to give you a bit more introduction about the main motivation about the project, I will try to answer three questions. Why we did the projects, what we did it, and how we did it. So the main motivation was to improve the customer experience when someone orders in a Douglas shop. So Douglas was our client. Uh, so motivation was that uh, customers didn't have a possibility to, when they order something on a shop, to see estimation of delivery time, something you can see in, for instance, Amazon and Zalando shops, for instance, in Europe. And that was the main motivation. So what we did, we used historical data to learn, uh, the, tr try to learn the process of this warehouse processing and to try to predict the delivery times of purchases made uh, in Germany, for instance. And as already mentioned, so we used historical data, uh, trained some machine learning models to estimate the earliest and latest date, the delivery, and that was the kind of the, what we did at the end. Um, problems, of if you, if you heard of these delivery time prediction problems, they can be ranging from simpler to more complicated ones. It depends on the warehouse and everything. So I will try to give a domain knowledge specifics of our problem, which was a bit more simplified. So the timeline when the user orders an item from the shop until it's uh, delivered to the end customer. 
So we can split it in three steps in our case. So first is platform processing time. So this is just the time that we run some business processing in the e-commerce shop. And that we kind of did, did not include in our prediction because that's in several minutes. So we, we kind of consider this is not, not time relevant. Then when we, um, when we process the order in this uh, e-commerce, we send it to the warehouse. And here, um, like simplification was that client had only one warehouse per country. So we send the information to warehouse and packaging time is just time that warehouse needs to package this order. And when we have the, when the packaging is done, we have a shipping time. And because we also have one warehouse, we had real time estimations from, for, for instance, for shipping from this warehouse to different zip codes. So we could use historical data to learn this packaging time and add some at shipping time estimations from the carrier, and that, that would be at the end something that we show to the end customer. So this is the domain knowledge specifics. Um, when we, um, I mentioned uh, in my presentation like some client requirements, um, like we, ch we had some challenges there, so I just wanted to give you introduction what we experienced. Uh, so it was, we always started with the POC, for instance, where we get a subset of the data and then try to, to see if our ideas make sense. And there, for instance, some of the first questions uh, that we wanted to clarify early is how many days in the future do we want to predict? They knew uh, that, for instance, uh, usually it takes three days, uh, three working days to process an order, sometimes, um, sometimes less, sometimes more. Uh, but they also, for instance, in the high load seasons, they, they experience more processing times. So that's why we agreed to kind of use the data to predict up to five working days in the future. The second question was, and it's related to productionalization, uh, like how to test periodicity or seasonality in this high load season, singles day, Black Friday, and Christmas period. So this is actually, usually if you work in e-commerce domain, this is a really popular period. Uh, most revenue comes in and everything needs to be um, kind of work uh, as expected. And this is actually, uh, we needed first time to deploy the model uh, in this season, which was also a challenge. So what we decided at that point, and also said, uh, said this is a requirement, that we have a shadow mode deployment. What this means is that we kind of deploy everything as a microservice, for instance, and we run, the, like, uh, run it in production, but we do not show it to the end customer. What this means, we can, for instance, during in this stage, somehow test this integration things uh, like response rate if our microservice can handle the load because load in this season is much much uh, is larger than usually, and we could also evaluate the test it in production, evaluate the production features, and do some metrics in the first two weeks. So that was our our idea back then, and retrain retraining and deployment frequency is also important for. Yeah, for this going into production. So we agreed that we do evaluate models every week and retrain and deploy if model performance decreases. So that those were some of uh, uh, requirements. Um, project pipeline looks the following. So we have uh, we have a data data pipeline with, which does the exports from the client database into Minio. Minio is the on-premise blob storage uh, that we use for storing all the data exports. So when we have enough historical data, we start with a standard uh, like uh, machine learning training pipeline with data pre-processing, cleaning the data, adding some features in feature engineering, splitting the data in different sets, doing model training and, and model evaluation. So this is a standard process. What we do here additionally is that we had multiple talks also today. Uh, what is important for us is uh, data versioning and model versioning. So here we uh, version the data, version the models for reproducibility. For that, we use different um, open source tools. So ModelDB is an open source tool that gives you a possibility to have an overview of experiments. So this is done in Argo pipelines. So this is an open source tool for pipelining in general, and this is our training workflow. So we have, when we have a good model, and we or we think that we have a good model, we can uh, start the model deployment. So we wrap the models in some in one of the framework. So we use Seldon. It's also an open source framework for deploying models in Kubernetes. Um, and this is uh, why we did it because we needed to deploy the model in the client's infrastructure, which was in Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so we wrap the models, uh, we uh, create Docker version for deployment, so we version also deployments, put it in container registry, update the deployment manifest, and also kind of do either staging or production deployments. So for that, we also use Argo pipelines, 
and Seldon is our main framework for that. So that's basically uh, just um, high-level architecture of the whole project. And um, here I will just link all the open source tools uh, that we use. Um, Okay, so we had this, um, we, we, we tried with different ML approaches and I just wanted to give you a short introduction what we tried. So we wanted to predict uh, some time, so how much time it takes to, to process an order. So the standard baseline approach is regression, where we have our features. Delivery time is, for instance, in hours is our label. And then we have the regression model. So that's, that was our baseline, that was a straightforward thing to do. And here we get some results, but they were not really satisfactory. For instance, this um, predicting longer times wasn't really working. So that was a good baseline, but we wanted to improve upon it. That's why we started with classification. So we translated this um, time into, uh, in hours into days. And then we had a classification model. So there, OK, we get a bit better results. So there we experim experienced some unbalanced problem specification because these longer delivery days are underrepresented. So we tried with different sampling techniques, which is also kind of standard, and also different weight losses to scale the gradients uh, during this process in order to kind of uh, have a learning process better. So we get improved results, but that wasn't really also, we wanted to try something else or try to improve it even more. And the last approach that we at the end use is a multimodal approach where we have our features, days also, and have multiple binary classification models for each day. So this is um, one versus all approach. So it, it also is not usually, it's not often used. It has its own challenges. But for us, it worked better than other approaches, and it was kind of a good starting point for for going into, into production, for the first iteration, actually. Um, what, for instance, uh, what I wanted to also add is how the inference looks like in the multimodal approach. So we have features, and for instance, in this example, we have three binary classification models, and we have some confidence scores, how confident our models are that the package will be delivered the each day. So here, we, we can take two approaches. Uh, one is winner takes all, to just take the model that's uh, most confident, or to have some kind of probability threshold to say, okay, if model is more than 60% confident, just take a, a range of days. So that's at the end what we uh, like. We have our estimations on the holdout data set, and this is actually something that we expect in production. During the shadow mode deployment, we test this, test our, if our assumptions are correct, and then use this probability threshold such that, for instance, we handle some edge cases, for instance, if we want, we don't want to always show the customer the whole range because it doesn't make sense, and so on. So this is somehow our process in production. Um, training overview is just um, something that we, um, that we um, how we use uh, and how we structure our team. Uh, this is uh, just a um, screenshot of this model DB, which is an open source tool. Uh, this tool gives you some uh, experiment view of your experiment. So what we wanted to do is the following. So we wanted to have um, pipelines early stage in the early stage of a project, for instance, training pipelines, these data export or processing pipelines and deployment pipelines, and such that everyone can, can start experimenting and having fast iterations. So this means that this view gives us a possibility to log, for instance, which data set we use, which hyperparameters we use, and it's structured like different, uh, different um, either open source or cloud solutions. For instance, you have projects. Each project can have multiple experiments, and uh, for instance, for different machine learning approaches, and um, you, for one uh, machine learning approach, you have different experiment runs. And here you just log everything what you do. You can compare experiments then later in your, in, inside your team, or you can share also the results to the end uh, client if they have a data science team for the end. So this is for reproduci reproducibility purposes, and it helped us to somehow compare our experiments and do fast iterations. Um, okay. I may be going a bit uh, fast <laughs> because, yeah, timing is always an issue. A front-end result is the following. So how we integrated everything. So on this slide, uh, we have, uh, like, in, in, uh, in one step of a checkout, uh, during the checkout process, actually, we collect the production features. 
and then we send a request to the microservice, which just gives us um, predictions, and we just show it here in the last step of a checkout in our e-commerce shop. So this is unfortunately in German, but it just says, yeah, the planned delivery day be will be between those two days. Uh, even though it is, it is just a small addition to the current functionality, it's like implementing everything in the background was somehow a process, so it wasn't um, like a work for one month, for instance. Um, I'm already at the key takeaways. Maybe I'm going too fast, but um, key takeaways are the following. So that's, those are some learnings that we think, uh, like not only for this project, but for all projects. And uh, we think that having regular meetings with the client during the life cycle of uh, either POC or a project is important. Um, why is that the case? Is because um, we have often some, uh, we often want to clarify domain knowledge specific, especially if we are doing, working in some domain that's not, that's not a standard domain. Um, then data clarifications always, so if we um, work with some data, um, data definitions on the, clients, on the client side, we want to, for instance, understand what this column in this data base means. And for us, the most important thing was this integra integration or architectural definitions. Uh, so, especially if you want to work, if you need to uh, to work, uh, for instance, not in cloud infrastructure but in the client's infrastructure. So we wanted um, uh, we wanted to clarify some definitions and processes early. For instance, everyone like in the company has some deployment process, and that's that's maybe if you're working like not on a daily basis with the team, you want to somehow define this and know these processes and pre prepare for them, and also like how to communicate everything and how to implement everything like in this integ uh, integrational of the whole or the whole platform. Um, the second. Uh, thing that we think is important is having fast iterations is with this all pipelines in place. So we try to do it in the early stage of a project. And this is actually something that helped, for instance, people also to like come into the projects. They have all the pipelines and they can just start using them. Um, so onboarding is easier. Uh, and at the end, having a shadow mode deployment, as I already mentioned, so helped us to test the response rates of our model, load of our model, and also uh, experiment or evaluate our model in production. Uh, so check the feature distribution, for instance. Model monitoring in production is also important, so it's a big topic. I didn't really go a lot into it. So, but I can explain you like our use case. So we at least try to have some kind of model monitoring uh, based on the log data. For instance, we log requests and responses. And then when, it's, when, uh, when we do not have, for instance, privacy issues, then we kind of sh um, um, have gray log, for instance, for uh, collecting all logs and cr having some kind of dashboards like, like Grafana dashboards for uh, seeing uh, the feature distributions in production, what our model actually, the statistics of our model's predictions, and of course the, the like accuracy metrics or s any other metrics uh, from the machine learning projects. So that's that's um, our takeaways or my takeaways that I wanted to share with you. And yeah, I'm I think good on time. So thank you very much, and I'm now open for questions. Maybe I can give you the mic. Because we took uh, all of the mics for the panel. Can you please just maybe raise your hands again? OK, thank you, thank you. Can you please send it back? Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was great. Thank you. Um, so I'm just curious. You mentioned that uh, one of the requirements was uh, that you continuously train the model. So maybe just um, briefly, how did you do that? In what tech stack? How was? Uh, how did that triggering and so on look like? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, I mentioned that we we evaluate the model um, somehow uh, manually, uh, like every week. So it was it was so we did in the in this in the first iteration we did manually. So we evaluate the models every week and then we get the business metrics and then we retrain it. So there are really better approaches to this, like event-based approaches. But uh, for us the challenge was that we 
we, we were working in the client's infrastructure. So any tools that we would add, that they were restricted. So for instance, Kubernetes cluster, you couldn't do any events or everything. So it was kind of a closed solution, close to the internet. So yeah, that's, that's why it was kind of um, done that way. Thank you. We have another one in the same row. Oh, great. Hi, mine was related. What was the threshold you used in order to decide whether to deploy the new model or to stick to the other? Yeah, and also, I had one more. Uh, what was the best classification model that uh, you found out to be working best for your scenario? Very good questions. So um, this threshold is was was depending like in the multiple iterations. So we de deployed multiple models. So I cannot tell you. So it was always a trade-off between the accuracy and this range of days, so the threshold. So at the end, customer kind of uh, checked uh, what are the results and decided on the threshold in production. So we could, as I already mentioned, we had estimations for different thresholds. This is the estimated value in production. So uh, sometimes, for instance, we didn't have threshold at all, at all and just took the two most uh, probable models. And if that was good enough in production, that's uh, like that, that was on the cr uh, client infrastructure to kind of say, OK, that's, that's fine. Uh, for the models, uh, it was XGBoost. Uh, so we had multiple million of entries. That was the fastest way, fastest to train and to we get best models for XGBoost classifier. We have another one here in the same row. Hello. Hi. I'm Vlad, and I also would like to ask you two questions. Uh, first of all, you changed the, the dates. I mean, you changed, the, you changed the dependent variable from hours to days in order to reduce the amount of categories in the dependent variable or for uh, some other reason? Uh, you mean uh, these five, five working days, you mean? Uh, you first projected in hours, you, uh, when it will yeah, arrive, yeah, yeah. and then in, in days. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, th th there, was a, uh, there was a business process in the background, so there was a threshold, uh, I think 50 hour, 50 hour 30. So when the warehouse processes the order that day, it gives you guarantee to, to that it will be shipped tomorrow. So that's how we, that we use that threshold to, to scale these hours to days, if you know what I mean. So that was uh, like specific to warehouse and our customer. Usually, we, we, we would not able be, be able to do it. I yeah. see. And one yeah. more question, please. Yeah. When, why, did you, you apply, why didn't you apply regression when you changed two days? I mean, the delta is still the same. Day one is like two days is at least twice more than one day. Why uh, did you use classification there and, for example, didn't use it on hours? And why didn't you use regression in both cases? Uh, yeah, so that's also a good question. Um, so for for like, yeah, I'm not sure if I can answer it fully. Uh, like, regression will give you continuous output, right? So yeah, we could then either have some rounding techniques to to put it to uh, like um, day below or ceiling flooring. I don't know, but that that didn't work for us. So when we tried it, that was that was that was a bit worse than this classification model approach, especially when we have the binary classification and multiple models, if, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Thank you very much. Are there may maybe any more questions? Aha, uh -huh, we have one at the back. Can you maybe please send the mic? Sure. Just send it. Great. At the back, at the back. Now at my left. <laughs> Thank you for being so helpful. And this is going to be the last one. We have to continue. Uh, congratulations for the presentation. Uh, I'd like to know if you consider a different kind of routes, for example, uh, if you, the, the routes are directly from the warehouse to the customer house, or uh, if the packages are collected, uh, delivered into a distribution center, and later uh, to a customer house, because it for my vision, it impacts for the provision of the, the time. I'm sorry, I didn't fully get the whole question. Um, maybe can you just repeat? Like uh, your question was about something about shipping times from the from the warehouse to the end customer, or uh, that uh, what what I want to mean. Uh, when you're calculating the, the time to, uh, to deliver, uh, there are some factors that can impact. For example, the the path. Okay, if we have a path between the warehouse direct to the customer house, of course uh, we have a shorter time. Yeah, I, yeah, if yeah. We, ha we have another kind of route. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, I now understand. So this is this is uh, wha what I mentioned with this simplified uh, use case. So we we had really a limited amount of information, and these paths were not not uh, available to us. So that that leads to, for instance, not. 
uh, really, really great results, but they were still better than what they currently have. So the next iteration would be to include this where, uh, like more warehouse relevant information. I hope this helps you. I mean, uh, the delivery time is really like in if you if you read some some blog posts or books. So it's a lot of this path optimization. I agree, but we kind of didn't include these mathematical mathematical models of, for instance, shorter path in the warehouse in our solution. I Thank hope you. this answers your question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for your amazing questions. You will be able to find Eid uh, somewhere. Of course, uh, yeah. In for, front. for any questions, I'm open outside also yeah. to answer them. Thank you, Eid. Thank it you. was amazing.